Over the last six months, this channel has acquired some 80,000 subscribers, and I couldn't be more grateful. But one of the many things that people tell me is, you should do a video on this, or have you done a video on this person, when I often already have. So I thought we'd take a walk down memory lane, so everyone can catch up with the top five most watched Simon Dan videos. Hello everybody and thank you very much for joining me this evening as we sit back, relax and take a look at some of the channel's history in the form of a cheesy top five. So without further ado, let's kick this off. First up at number five is absolutely wrecking a flat earther, M. Ben's response to. I have fond memories of this one because M. Ben's was the first person ever to make a response video to me. Hello and welcome. I am Simon Dan and I am very excited. It's happened. Someone has made a response to my response. I've been hoping for this since the start and boy has it worked out well. The whole episode didn't start well for M. Benz as he immediately showed his geographical naivety. So first of all, Simon and Dan, good try. When I said photograph or curvature has never been photographed, you put a picture of, I guess, the ISS or whatever, and a picture of the curve of the Earth, of a camera above the Earth. I'd just like to point out that the landmass you're referring to is not Florida, it's Italy. Not the best start for you there. The absolute highlight though, was knowing that he fell for my carefully planted trap. In the video of the ISS you showed off, there was no stars, planets, other satellites in that video, but in the picture you showed, there was stars. So I'm confused, are there stars or are there not stars? Like they like they contradict themselves, the pictures, the, the picture to the video. So you can't use two contradictory reference points to try and debunk someone else. Now, it's not very often that I pull one out of the bag, but I have 100% played a blinder here. The first picture I posted was indeed of the Earth and I deliberately chose it because if you notice, it was on the nighttime side of the Earth when the sun is not visible. The ISS feed I showed later was, as you can see, on the daytime side. The reason you can see stars on one and none on the other is the same reason you can see them during the night and not during the day here on the surface. The sun is too bright during the day. In the ISS feed, the sun is reflecting off the Earth, which itself is fairly bright, and this drowns out any other lights, especially faint stars. On the first picture I showed, that was when the sun was out of the way. It wasn't able to drown those stars out and hence you could see them. I deliberately chose those two contrasting pictures in the hope you would mention it and you bought it, hook, line and sinker. Now that's not a very good use of your common sense, is it? That felt good, that one. And it was one of the first times that I realized that flat earthers could be got at. Okay, next up and in at number four is flat earther hilariously tries to use Google Earth to debunk the globe. Now this particular one was great because Adam I. Fee had been picking on me a little bit. Simon Dan, you are now Simon Clown. You have nothing. You have a silly haircut, a dopey look on your face. You love magic stories. And I, I don't even know if you're just deluded or you really are some sort of government halfwit. Either way, what a joke. So I was waiting for the opportunity to hit back and this video was the perfect chance. Basically, Adam I. Fee had a gross misunderstanding when it came to elevation and drop. And that was the difference on the journey. Elevation is, I go up 16,322 feet. I come down 16,312 feet. Wow, difference of 10 feet, 10 feet a difference. You heard it here first, people. There's only 10 feet of difference between Weymouth and Aberdeen. Of course, what you fail to understand is that you're using elevation, which is a value given to the height above sea level. As you're making your journey from one seaside town to another, then of course there's gonna be very little difference between the two. Or, to put it another way, look at this. 
This is a route from Swansea to Buxton. The distance is 261 kilometres, which is around 162 miles, much less than Adam's journey from Weymouth to Aberdeen. As you can see, the elevation change is 3,073 metres up and 2,778 metres down. That's a difference of 295 metres. This is because, as I said before, elevation is different to curvature. I've just proved that by taking a shorter journey that shows a higher elevation change. Adam showed several more examples of his proof, all of which went from coastal town to coastal town. And of course, what's glorious about that is that recently the Chuckle Brothers, Nathan Oakley and Quantum Eraser, actually that's offensive to the Chuckle Brothers, but you get my drift. Old Nathan and Quantum Eraser made this amazing and brand new discovery that Google Earth proves a flat Earth a full year after Adam Ife came up with his theory. So they can't even come up with an original idea. Tragic. Okay, next up at number three is Flat Earther on a chat show, what could go wrong? This was the first time I introduced Allegedly Dave and long time viewers will remember he has some interesting hobbies. Hello, so day one of the uh, Great Breatharian experiment. Surprisingly, for somebody who's uh, done a 30-day fast and forgotten to eat for eight or nine days, I found the first day to be very, actually, very difficult, actually. And even this. Well, I've been drinking urine now for, for six years. Oh, maybe someone should tell him that urine is 96% water. And it's probably better if he just drunk water. But this particular episode was about Dave's appearance on Late Night with Malenko a then Macedonian chat show. In it, Dave proceeded to recite all the old flat earth tosh and Milenko nodded along confusingly. He made an absolute plethora of mistakes, but the episode culminated in one of the things that angers me the most. And it seems that uh, nobody's ever on the space shuttle. And the proof of that is the Challenger disaster. Um, in, uh, I believe it's 1986, the Challenger exploded just after takeoff and killed seven astronauts. But it turns out that six of the astronauts are still alive, and uh, most of them are using their original names. Um, and you, you know, uh, you can find pictures of them. They're, they're using the same names, and they're they're doing ordinary jobs now. Anyone who's watched me for some time will know that I've addressed this before on an older video when Sleeping Warrior made the same disrespectful comments. Here's a quick clip. What he's probably seen is a picture like this, or a slightly different variation of it, or a YouTube video or something. Now if Mr. Warrior had actually looked into it and done some research, not flat earth research, but proper research, he would have found out that this is all a hoax. The man on the left of this picture is the commander of Challenger, Francis Scobie. The man on the right is also Francis Scobie, who during the time of the launch was CEO and president of the Marketing Edge Inc. out of Chicago clearly not the same guy. I mean, they've got completely different shaped chins. What about this one? The man on the left of this picture is Challenger Mission Specialist Ellison Onizaka. The man on the right is his brother Claude. And this one. The lady on the left of this picture is Sharon McAuliffe, a teacher who was selected out of 11,000 applicants to be the first civilian in space. The lady on the right doesn't even look like her, and we're supposed to believe that they're the same person, despite the fact that at the time of the launch, Sharon McAuliffe on the right was working for a law, a law firm in New York. That's just three examples, and it's the same for all the others. Clearly, to the normal rational mind, this theory has no substance whatsoever. But if people want to believe enough, they will. Sickening. The episode ended on a high note, though, as I gave the viewers a real treat. So we'll call it a day here and leave Dave to his half pint of urine. My morning routine is basically, um, I would you know, get up, um, wear my glass, um, drink most of it, uh, leaving a little bit at the bottom. And uh, yeah, I'd wash myself with it. Lovely. Okay, let's move on. In at number two, we have Flat Earth Leader Gets His Best Five Points Ruined. This was the first time I ever started a video with a little skit. On this particular occasion, it was a subtle dig at Nathan Oakley after he made this. Hi, I'm Nathan Oakley, and in this video, I'm going to be covering a faker that's made his way into this tiny corner of the internet we call Flat Earth. 
This guy's called Simon Dan, and I'm gonna do a few comparisons so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So first we've got ABC News on the 24th of August with 19,000 views, video about John McCain. By comparison, 24th of August, 109,000 views on a debunking video. Moving on to ABC News, 7th of September, a shade under 9,000 views. And Dan on the same date, 67, nearly 68,000 views. It was also a time I was getting a lot of digs off people for reading a script, which I freely admit. I mean, I write the damn thing, so... But anyway, I went for a run and I dreamt up this skit. <clears throat> Yeah, hello, is that ABC News? Hi there. Um, uh, I wonder if you can put me in touch with someone in the marketing department. Yeah. Great, thanks. Yeah, I'll hold. Round, 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 the earth is round. Smart people found that the earth is round. There's proof about, don't fool around. The data's sound, the earth is round. Like an apple. Or a melon being sailed by Bray Magellan. Yet you ask, is this all true? What the hell? What's wrong with you? Like a snowball or a beat, it spins through space. It's really sweet. Your lack of science is quite rife. Goodness gracious, get alive! Round, round, round. The Earth is round. Smart. I actually think that a flat earther picked this one up and thought it was a serious video and that I'd been caught out. The main content of the video was addressing Mark Sargent's keynote speech at the Canadian Flat Earth Conference, where he came up with five questions which were apparently for a physicist. A month ago, a German television team contacted me because they had heard about my science challenge and had found a physicist at Georgetown University I could debate. They also wanted to make it as easy on the scientist as possible so their idea was simple. They would record me on video, reading five quick science-based questions, and then send that recording over to Georgetown, and he would respond in kind. In principle, this is a great idea. My only problem is I'm guessing he will use a load of old pseudo-scientific flat earth claptrap and possibly some fake facts. Which of course he did. His final question though, gave me a great chance to introduce the Family Fortunes buzzer, something that is almost as loved as the yodeler. The Van Allen belts. A simple yes or no question. Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes, they can be. If yes, then how did Apollo 11 through 17 make round trips through these belts with only aluminum and plastic as shielding? No one died, no one got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. Our survey said... All wrong. Jack Swagger of Apollo 13 died of bone cancer in 1982, and Alan Shepard of Apollo 14 died of leukemia in 1998. Fake fact right there. I think there's still like five left. Radiation is only stopped by two metals, lead and gold. Our survey said... Oh, is that it again? Some radiation can actually be stopped by paper some by thin sheets of aluminium. In fact, only gamma radiation needs a metal like lead to stop it. I do love that buzzer, and regular viewers would have seen it many, many times. This was actually the first time I addressed the Mark Sargent video, and I didn't do it again till some months afterwards. Of course, I reviewed the Behind the Curve documentary in which he was a main feature, but I still think there is an opportunity to look at him again. Time will tell on that one. Right, that brings us on nicely to the number one watch Simon Dan video, Flat Earth's Most Useless Experiment to Date. Yes, it will probably come as no surprise to all of you that the Gate video is my most watched video. In it, Chris UK was trying to prove that the Earth doesn't rotate using a gate and a couple of cameras. So we've got here the North Pole, which is there on a the ball. Then we've got us in Great Britain, which is here on a ball. Then we've got Florida on the ball further down. South America here, the tip of top of South America, and then the equator. They're all rotational planes around the ball. Right, I'm 100% with you. So as we move, 
using the centre north pole pivot around that as a pivot, we all move at different speeds in space if we live on a ball. And we should see the sky move at different speeds dependent on where you are on this spinning ball. And if the stars look, a single star moves at the same speed from Earth, then stars are moving. If they're moving faster for other people on the ball, the Earth is moving. But they don't see that. The stars all move at the same, one star moves at the same speed for everybody. I don't even think Chris knew what he was talking about with this one. The episode came to a head though, when a passerby stopped to ask some questions. What we've worked out is flat. I know it sounds mad. Um, the stars are going round us. Right. Right. Uh, and that's probably there's, there's loads of different theories. It's been going on for about three years. It's, I think there's 20 million YouTube videos on YouTube now. 20 million videos of people saying, "Where is the curvature? Water finds its level, and space is fake." Hardly groundbreaking, is it? Over the last two, three years, people have thought. Three years ago, it was probably about six. But people have cottoned on to this, looked into it for themselves, and worked out what we've been told is a load of bollocks. No, what people have done is not understand a physical concept and then replace their confusion with something that they can grasp, despite a complete lack of coherent thinking. Where I've come up with uh, this proof, basics proof, right? That it's that simple that no one seems to have picked up on it or they picked on bits. There's, there's plenty of people picked up on it, but they've not, not sort of how to explain it. And I've worked it out how to explain it in the simplest form. Um, once people get their head around and see this, they'll realize balls, basically. Actually, what they realize is that they've just wasted five minutes watching a guy push a gate backwards and forwards as concrete proof that Earth is in a ball. All the time realizing they could have spent the time better Counting the amount of bird shits that have hit their car today. I had so many comments about the amount of bird droppings on people's cars that I could have made a graph. So there we have it. The top five most watched Simon Dan videos. If you enjoyed this and have other ideas about any other scientific top fives I can do, then please do comment below. I shall leave a link to all five of these videos in the description in case you want to check them all out individually at a later date. Thank you all very much for watching. Please do drop a like and subscribe if you deem it worthy. I have been Simon Dan and I will see you all on Tuesday for some more Space Busters. Until then. Bye.